I got to take my family to a sanctuary the other day and we got like this back lot tour and it was cool. We got to do things like you know, feed and pet koalas, feed kangaroos and wallabies by hand. We got to hold snakes. It was a big deal for, for them to be able to do that. But there, there, were, there were some rules involved with the snakes. You know, we we're told like, obviously, you know, they're totally cool if you keep open hands, you know, keep your hands open and they'll crawl, slither around, crawl up your head. You wear them as a little hat, you know, but don't go grab them around the neck or they're gonna think you're a predator and they might bite you. You know, so there was, there's, there's some policy in place that, you know, is there to keep everybody safe. There were some dingoes there, and I really love dogs. I used to train dogs uh, you know, between series and, and uh, police canine type stuff. And I, I just, I think they're so cool. And, and dingoes are more like wolves. They're just incredibly smart. And you can see it in their eyes. We were told that they're so smart and friendly that it makes it difficult to train them for um, certain interactions with guests. So there, there's like, you know, there were a lot of rules there, and, and, at no point in time when I'm hearing these rules am I like angry about them. You know, I'm like, that makes perfect sense. I'm not gonna go throttle a snake. When we s step outside of the sanctuary and into the greater world, something happens where we start to feel like maybe these rules and best practices that everybody has don't, uh, don't apply to me or don't matter as much, or maybe I can bend or break them because I will be able to control that snake, whatever it looks like. And suddenly we find ourselves as humanity in uh, pretty awesome predicaments. But especially, I think, when it comes to the supernatural. We, we have a hard time, I think, respecting the rules of God. You know, and it's so easy to get away with not having to acknowledge them if we just write it all off as like a fairy tale. I think there's so much evidence that, that God is real and that God is looking for a relationship with us. But understandably, there are rules around God's holiness and around the kind of life that he's okay with us living that we have to come to accept what that is. And so in a super simple nutshell kind of way, I've, the way I sort of think about it is this, like the three R's. Where are we on the scale uh, towards what is the penultimate goal for, for God, which is right relationship with us? And when he's in right relationship with us, we are inevitably going to be our most vibrant, healthy, unique, imaginative, creative, powerful selves. But how, what are the rules to get there? One, quite simply, is we have to, there has to be a revelation of who God is, an awareness that God exists and that God exists in our lives in a meaningful way. The, the fabric of our DNA, our atoms are glued together and kept organized. I mean, these could come apart and we could float away like some kind of Thanos snap of the finger if God chose to, but I think God keeps us together for our time in on this planet, in this earth, in this universe, because he's a God that loves life and um, and cares and, and organizes things in a way that is good. The scripture talks about this um, in, in Revelation. It says, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Scripture says you don't have an excuse for being unaware that God exists because look at this place. There's too much happening here that is um, beyond coincidence. So that grace through revelation, that the, the, the grace that is, is, is made available to us by, by God showing up in certain ways, that you're like there is, a, there is a higher power here, a high creative energy that sustains us in this place. Um, we have to accept that if we are going to have that end goal of relationship. But there's also the rules uh, about restoration. So revelation is important. Once we've done that, where are we in relationship with this uh, creative uh, God? Probably in need of restoration. We can look at the first pages of the Bible in this, this Edenic picture, this Garden of Eden, where man was aware of God. God was walking with and living among the garden and, and mankind and there was right relationship. Mankind said, um, I think I would like to make my own rules and defied God. And this restoration between God and man, ultimately we see that this is fulfilled once and for all for any who are willing to accept this gift through the person of Jesus. This God showed up in human form to ultimately become a sacrifice for anybody who is willing to accept that I need to be restored to this God so that I can have a right relationship. 
Um, and it seems too simple sometimes, but there it is. Um, I believe that that is for, for any and all. Again, in Revelation, there's this beautiful uh, image of the resurrected Christ. It says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to dine with him and he with me. So Jesus is looking for this open awareness of who he is and what's important to him and, and his kingdom and uh, that there, there be value placed in, in the things that Jesus values. And similar to the sanctuary, there are, there's a process to enjoying the creatures that are in that place. There's a process to enjoying the, the ultimate creative divine energy that God is. And, uh, and it, it kind of can be thought of in that simple way, um, the three R's. So um, where are you on that journey? Where am I on that journey? That's something I continually reflect on and invite you to as well.